to this week's episode of MSU Inside Out on Channel 19. I'm one of your hosts, Jamie Council. And I'm your other host, Mariah Zabak. We have a really great show today with a full of a lot of great guests and interviews. Mm -hmm. We hear from a senior football player who has really stepped up the plate as a leader this year, Wayne Peters. We also hear from another athlete from the women's hockey team. We haven't heard about a lot of women's hockey this year, mm -mm. so I'm looking forward to hearing about that. And we have our first auction in action piece with a third year donor. Yeah, uh, really excited for my interview with uh, a transfer from Carson, uh, Carson California. Um, and then also we have a lot of other great things coming up. I know Bridget's going to be talking a little bit about uh, the social work organization, uh, getting out into the colds. And we're going to hear some weather, speaking of the colds, and then also more fantasy football and basketball startups. So I know Jess is going to be talking about that. And then we're also going to hear a little bit about another culture. I know, uh, Bridget, you have a little bit more about Native American culture. I sure do, Jamie. And this week is Native American Culture Awareness Week. And so it's been happening all week long, and we have so many good things to talk about. Well, let's hear them. Let's get right in. MSU Native American Culture Awareness Club was hosting Native American Culture Celebration this week. Part in the celebration of Native American culture with presentations about clothing, jewelry, and music. One of the presenters, Jessica McCabe, has been involved with Native American culture since graduate school. My advisor at the time led me in this direction. She was telling me about her research and then she asked if I would be interested in picking up where her research left off and look at Native American clothing makers from the 1940s to the present. She founded Beyond Buckskins, a website and clothing line inspired by historical and contemporary Native American culture. It slowly developed into this major entity um, and it's really coming out of the Native artists themselves. There's something out there, there's something going on, um, but there isn't this one space where we can learn about that. And that was in 2005 and I've been researching and writing about Native American clothing makers since that time. The presentations were put together because the club wanted to raise awareness for Native culture. I'm a true believer that prejudice um, happens if somebody fears something or the unknown, they would avoid it. And so in my eyes, the more I can educate people, the less maybe their prejudice. Mm -hmm. um, and we're doing that by the celebration. And in all reality, we have a lot to celebrate in Indian country. Um, and we wanted to be able to um, celebrate by bringing in people who are out there for a with a cause or who are themselves a celebration. For MSU Inside Out, I'm Andre Livingston. The Native American Cultural Celebration ends November 20th at 7 p.m. with Ernie LaPointe presenting the City Bowl Connection. Although the economy in North Dakota is booming, some Minot residents are still struggling to survive. The 11th annual Freezing for a Reason event participants will stand in the cold and freeze to experience homelessness firsthand. The MSU Student Social Work Organization and Minot Homeless Coalition are learning are teaming up to give back to those less fortunate by donating non-perishable food items and money. If you are interested in dropping off food, monetary contributions, or freezing with the other participants, you can join them in the Town and Country Center parking lot from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. this Saturday. Long nights, staying up late, and functioning on little to no sleep are common amongst college students. The MSU Theater Department faces these challenges head-on with their 24-hour play festival. This is a series of four plays that provides a unique experience for not only the actors, but also the writers. Actors are asked to sign up without knowing their role or lines since the stories will be written based on the actor tryouts. I have them bring in one costume piece and one prop piece. And these, all these costumes and props, they are the only costumes and props that can, get, that can be used in the shows. You can't bring any other extras. And you have to write around those and write around whatever actors you get. Anyone is open to try out, even those with no background in the theater. I think 24 Hour essentially is a great way, especially for freshmen, to get involved into the theater program. The plays are written, produced, and performed all in 24 hours. 
The 24-hour play festival begins 7.30 p.m. on November 15th and concludes with a performance at 7.30 on November 16th in the Al Shire Theater. And coming up this month, Mariah, I know we have really some, well, actually beginning of next month, really something special with the KMSU auction. We do, we do. We have our first auction and action piece today, actually. We'll get right to it. Thanks, right. Bridget. You're welcome. Today I'm here with Francesca DeAngelis, a former basketball player here, a broadcasting student, and a three-time donor to the KMSU auction. Thank you for being with us today. No problem. Now, this year, um, Francesca and her family have decided to donate a condo stay in Cabo San Lucas. Can you tell me a little bit about your condo? Yeah, um, this, co this condo is actually like not downtown of Cabo, so it's more in like a, a resort area, so it's more peaceful, relaxing, that kind of stuff. If you want to go party, you can always take a cab. <laughs> it's 20 minutes away, so it's like in a good location. It's very nice. You walk out. You see the beach right there, a grass pool, like, it's really nice. Like, I like going there. I try and go once a year. <laughs> really? What's, yeah. what's the best time of the year to go? Honestly, year-round, not August. August is a lot of hurricanes, but you can go in December and it's nice. Like, warm weather. My parents sometimes go in December just to get away, but it's very, the weather's always nice there. It's warm. Um, so is it available for, if the person that buys this package, can they go anytime? Yeah, you can just call my mom. The number is on there when you, if you end up getting it. And you just call her, make a reservation, and she'll just give it to you guys if it's open. What's your favorite thing to do at your condo? Ooh, wake up, make some margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> go I want to go. Beach, go to the beach. <laughs> But uh, my favorite thing to do is just chill all day, go to the beach, there's snorkeling, there's also the Hilton to the left, like there's a bunch of hotels around, and they also have activities that you can do, and there's jet skiing, parasailing, and that's like a 10 minute walk down the beach, so it's nice, they also have horseback riding across the street, you can also rent ATVs, there's a golf course resort too if you're a golfer, right there, like... Um, yeah. Now like, I want to buy the package, but I'm too yeah. broke. <laughs> uh, like Eleven pools too. There's a lot of pools there. That's insane. Yeah. Um, so why did your family decide to donate? Besides being a student here in the broadcasting department, um, why do you think this is such a good cause to donate to? I think because mostly they just appreciate everything that Minot State has given to me as an athlete, and the opportunity I've had over here, and like them taking me in like a couple weeks before school started. So I think. It's just something to give back, and they don't mind doing it. Like, it's not that stressful for them. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Franny, for being here with us. Now, that piece will be auctioned off the night of December 5th, live at 6.30 p.m., so make sure you tune in if you want to win a condo stay in Cabo San Lucas. Any time of the year that you want to go, you can go ahead and do that. So that's December 5th. And now we're going to go ahead and toss it on over to Kyler, who's talking to a MSU women's hockey player. Kyler? Thanks, Mariah. She hails from Hayes in North Dakota, so she's not she's not uh, unfamiliar with the ice and the cold weather. So why not play your favorite sport on the ice? Joining me today is Christine Irwin of the women's hockey team. Thanks for joining us today, Christine. Thanks. So you guys are 2-2 two and two coming into the season. Uh, what are your opinions on the season so far? Um, it's going pretty good, actually. Um, we started off with a loss to Duluth, which was not – unexpected like they do have a bigger ice it's an olympic size rink so we got pretty tired out but um coming in and beating south dakota state at our home rink was pretty awesome and um sweeping the weekend was just icing on the cake so yeah you you come from hazen you were formerly a bison yeah. now you're going to fargo this weekend to play the bison what are your thoughts on their team um well last year we um lost to them so we didn't make it to nationals so this is kind of like a step up if we beat them this weekend it's just gonna um fire us up to have a good rest of our season so okay you we, it's pretty well known that the men's team here is pretty elite they won the national championship last year do you guys feel the pressure to step up and be an elite team as well um we do but ours isn't so competitive as the boys are obviously like we only play 
people from the north so ours is a little less competition but we still are very very competitive in um, where we play and who we play so okay what kind of work goes into being a women's hockey player <laughs> um, well there's a lot of work um, we practice twice a week and um, we practice for an hour we pr- we skate a lot in doing practice. Um, we work on a lot of passing, a lot of drills like that, and um, we are now working on like power play and pen- penalty kill a lot during practice so we can get better at that so we can do better during games. What are your goals for the season? Um, our goals for the season, um, just uh, well, we have a better, better team this year than most years that we paid, played, so our goal is to um, eventually – um, make it to nationals. We had to add a game with Wisconsin this year because we didn't have enough um, games that counted for towards nationals. So we added a game at the end of the season against Wisconsin. So um, that'll up us in the rankings because they're ranked pretty high. How many people do you have coming back this season? Um, we have, I think we lost like six girls last season. So we have most of our starters from last season coming back. We have a lot of Minot high girls that came up from last year they graduated last year so we have a lot of Minot High natives so a lot of hometown people yeah yeah. um what's your major my major is special education and elementary ed well so you're a scholar athlete there (laughs) thanks for joining me today uh and I can't skate I I can skate I can't stop so maybe you and Bridget one weekend can show me how to stop thanks for joining us today Christine thanks all right back to you guys in the studio Thank you, Kyler, and thank you, Christine, for being with us today. It was really awesome to hear about the MSU women's hockey team. I've heard a lot about the men's team, but not yeah, a lot you, about the women's team. You don't hear a lot about the women's team, but they still have home games uh, uh, this year, so they're at the Mace Arena. And then we still have a lot of great things coming up on the show. We're about halfway through. I know I'll be talking to a senior football player that has broken the receiving yards with 66. We'll be hearing more about especially basketball and get your fantasy picks ready. And then also Chris is going to tell us what to expect weather-wise coming up after the break. Thank you to our underwriters. Walmart. At Walmart, you can save money so you can live better. MSU Hockey Club, the 2013 ACHA Men's Division I National Champions. Visit us online at msubeaverhockey.com or on Facebook and Twitter. Western Pacific Crane and Equipment. The authorized dealer for Manitowoc, Grove, and National Crane. The Center for Extended Learning. Our mission is to provide flexible, accessible, and quality lifelong learning opportunities. All-American Trophy. Established in 1983, located on South Broadway for all your trophy and screen printing needs. The Pita Pit. Sandwiches soup, and salad. Fresh thinking, healthy eating. Art Main. Women's clothing, accessories, and art supplies located on Main Street. Midwest Oil Jobs. Brings employers, retailers, and other professionals from the Midwest under one roof to connect like-minded individuals. Creative Property Management. Over 45 years of experience in managing properties and helping tenants find the right home. MSU Athletic Department, NCAA Division II, promoting good character and a positive experience. Red Rising. MSU Red and Green, Monarch State University's official student-run newspaper. Digital Office Center, offices located in Minot and Bismarck, provides the complete line of Xerox equipment, supplies, and services. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. Located on South Broadway across from Walmart. Be seen, be heard on the Alshire, Black Box, and Amphitheater stages. MSU Theater, where we tell the world's stories. MSU Art Department, stimulating creativity campus-wide by providing exhibitions and art events. Fiance Bridal, located downtown Minot, and now you can shop online. NDAD, help for people with disabilities and health challenges. Pepsi of Minot, the local Pepsi Cola bottling company serving the North Dakota areas of Minot, Dickinson, Devil's Lake, Botno, and Hedinger. Rick Jewelry, where you'll shimmer and shine. Watney Realtors, a full service real estate agency handling residential, commercial, and investment properties. 
Spicy Pie, Pizza, Grinders, Beer, located in the Beaver Ridge Plaza. RL specializes in creating custom-made vintage mod children's and baby clothes. Happy Joe's Pizza and Ice Cream, good time to be together. KCJB AM, 910 AM, Minot News and Information Station. KIZZFM, Z94, Minot's only station for today's hit music. 97 Kicks FM, today's hot new country. KZPR FM, Minot's rock station, 105.3 The Fox. KMXA FM, Minot's best music mix, Mix 99.9. SOS Image, improving the health and self-esteem of every client. Grizzlies, the place for wood fried food, friends, and family. We're back on MSU Inside Out. I'm Jamie Council. Joining me now is senior wide receiver for the Minot State football team that is about to pad up for the last few times in his career. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining me, Wayne. Thank you for having me. So, uh, Wayne Peters broke the total amount of rushing uh, of uh, receptions, receptions yeah. with 66. That's really high. I know yep. it's, uh, you only had th only 39 mm -hmm. last year. Yeah. So, how is it uh, this being your last year? Because you're a transfer. Mm -hmm. so this is your second year yep. in Minot. So, what yeah. was your experience in Minot been like? Uh, I think my experience in Minot has been actually very good. Like, when I first got here, I didn't really know that many people. But you know, when you just start, I guess, I guess, going to Walmart and just going to a little <laughs> place like the mall, you start to meet more people. It's not that bad. You start to, I guess, just find more people in the city. Yeah, that's what um, yeah. people say. It's what you make it. So mm -hmm. that's great that you. So you say you like it now. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, you're definitely seeing, uh, you know, really good uh, mm -hmm. success on the field. With, um, like I said, you broke the amount of receptions. You have 736 mm -hmm. yards so far for this season. Yeah. And uh, you're also a business management major. So uh, looking past football, what do you want to do with that? Oh, uh, well, I picked business uh, major because right now I'm still, I'm not going to say I'm undecided, but I figure with the business major, it gives me opportunity to get, you know, more variety of jobs. So when I go back home to California yeah. and I start my actual job searching, make the process a lot easier. Yeah, especially in California yeah. with the job market. Mm -hmm. And I know you're coming into your last game uh, this weekend, last mm -hmm. home game. What are kind of your feelings on that? Uh, it's kind of sad because, like I said, when you go to practice today, everybody's like, oh, you know, it's your last practice. You know, how do you feel? It's just like, oh, godly, I never really thought about that. But it's, it's kind of starting to hit you and that you can see it in all the other seniors' faces. Just the, I don't know, it's something you can just tell, just the way the feeling, I guess. But you're just trying to go out in this game and, I guess, leave it all out on the field. Really nothing else you can do. Yeah. No regrets. Exactly, and you've yeah. put in the time, you know, the mm -hmm. rest of the season to uh, put it up. What has been your best, uh, your best memory here at Minot? Uh, my best memory, you mean like at football wise, or um, just uh, yeah, football wise. We'll start football, football wise. wise. I'll probably it'll probably be this season that uh, second game season against Augustana. That big catch that was probably the biggest things ever probably happened to me sports wise. So yeah, that was, was pretty exciting. It was on YouTube. Yeah. It, was, it was really exciting. I was at yeah. that game. It was, uh, and then with the fireworks afterwards. Yeah, it was, it was so overwhelming. It was great. Yeah, yeah. and then um, about off the field, mm -hmm. uh, what has been your, you know, most memorable thing? Uh, most memorable thing. I would probably, off the field, uh, let's see. There's a lot of little things. I just... Off the field, I like the people. The, everybody's nice. I think that's like something very memorable. Like when I, if I go back home or when I do go back home, everybody in mind, I know the code treats you nice. You know, if you treat them with respect, they'll treat you with respect. So yeah, it's that's kind of yeah. It's very friendly place. Yeah, it's a very friendly environment. I really like it. Yeah. Well, um, we're all out of time now, but thank mm -hmm. you so much for joining yeah, me. And, thank uh, you. Good luck this weekend. Yep. And good luck in your future <laughs> endeavors. You're out of mine, out yeah. of the cold, back to California. <laughs> a little warm weather. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Wayne Peters. Watch the Beavers uh, this weekend in their last home game action. And to hear a little bit more about sports, let's go to our very own sports guy, Jesse. All right, thank you, Jamie. Now, the Minot State basketball team was at home on Tuesday night. The Beavers hosted an NAIA foe in Dickinson State. Now, the play of the game came from Sam Johnson. Thomas Korf misses a shot, and in comes Sam. Get up and flush it. Now, let's take a look at that play one more time. It was that good. Here it comes again. Sam would finish with 13 points and 13 rebounds, and the Beavers would go on to win the game 
77 to 52. They will see action again this Sunday when they host Presentation College. Now, the Minot State women's basketball team was also at home this week. They hosted Jamestown College last night. The game was tied at halftime, but the Beavers rolled in the second half to win 85 to 67. Carly Bogue led the charge, scoring 50, 25 points in the latter frame. The girls will also be at home this Sunday when they host Presentation College. Now, the Minot State football team will be looking to end their season on a positive note. MSU will play host to Bemidji State University on Saturday. With identical 2-8 records, both teams want to move away from the bottom of the Northern Sun Conference. Now, kickoff will be at 1.30 at Herb Parker Stadium. Now, although the Minot State football season is coming to a close, fantasy football is still going strong. Andre is back to help you with your lineup. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to week 11 of fantasy football. I had my bye week last week. Now I'm all rested up, so let's get it started. The quarterback position is always important, and there's two I have my eye on this week. Nick Foles has been electrifying lately, and Alex Smith has something to improve on Sunday night. Both of them will get the job done this week. Now, all the big name running backs should have good weeks, but I'm looking for Ben Tate to break out. He's the number one running back in Houston, and he's going to show it. Now, at wide receiver, there's one player who stands above the rest. Megatron! Calvin Johnson is scary good, and the Steelers will not stop him at all. Moving on to tight ends, Timothy Wright is coming along nicely. Mike Glennon likes him, and I think he'll be scoring this weekend. Time for my defense of the week. It's the Seattle Seahawks and the Legion of Boom. The Vikings still have questions at quarterback, and the Seahawks are so solid at home. Turnovers will be forced, and touchdowns may be scored. Now, are you ready for this? It's sleeper time. And I hope you didn't get tired during my bye week, because my sleeper pick of the week is Percy Harvin. Yes, Percy's back, at least. He should be, barring any setback. If he sees action this weekend, he'll have a chip on his shoulder against his former team. Hey, everything will be great if you listen to Drake. There you have it. Andre Livingston making your fantasy a reality. Now, girls, I'm going to shift back to local sports. Um, the volleyball team is wrapping up their season this weekend. They have two games at home, both tomorrow and Saturday. Uh, and Mariah, I guess you're announcing both, I guess. Both of those games you just told me. Yes, yes, I am announcing those games. Thank you, Jesse, so much. Boom goes the deadline. Talking about volleyball, um, they do have two home games this weekend. Fridays will be at 7 p.m. and Saturdays will be at 6 p.m. Yeah. And big congratulations to Jen Dixon made um, the- Second team, right? The, yep, second team, and I think, uh, yeah, that's a great honor. Um, beyond that, we have tailgating this weekend to look forward to. We got hot cocoa. Um, hopefully, we won't need it. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll, we'll probably need it, but it's to what degree if it's uh, based on whether we'll survive or not. But we'll definitely have to have our jackets out. And um, I think we're going to head over to uh, Chris is going to tell us whether what the damage is. All right. Let's, uh, let's go over and check out the damage. All right. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> okay. Uh, you'll see that we have, right now, it's 45 degrees. It feels like 42, so that's uh, nothing too bad. Um, we uh, have still had that 7.50 in the morning sunrise, and that 5, well, it's already dark right now, isn't it? Uh, continuing on, tonight we have um, about the mid-30s, uh, late upper 20s. Um, again, this isn't too much to expect, uh, or this is about what we expected about this time of year. So. Nothing exciting, um, nothing great, so that's always a good thing when it comes to weather. Now, uh, Friday we have 48 degrees, um, 50, up, lower 50s. Um, we also, again, these mid 40s to lower 50s are pretty nice um, temperatures. Nothing more than you'd expect. Again, a very exceptional weekend. I think that's what I could come across with. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, we'll start to dip down a little bit. We're going to be in the 20s, lower 30s, depending on where you are in the state. Again, 
Um, but again, there will be some clear parts, so it will be some partly cloudy, nothing too much. Now, Saturday, big game, the beavers going against each other, that's going to be exciting, uh, all come, and as you'll see, we have about 40s, uh, 45 degrees. Um, and that's going to be exceptional. I think about the time that the kickoff starts, it'll be around 40 degrees. So nothing too bad. This should be really fun. Hope to see you there at tailgating. Uh, also in Williston, you'll notice that it's a little bit cloudy. There's a chance of snow. Uh, it's only about 10 to 20 percent, but that's something to look to. Uh, Sunday, we have 20s, um, nothing too bad, um, mid 30s. So again, it'll be a nice Sunday. Continuing on throughout the week, you'll see that we have Monday with 40, um, then we'll take a big dip on Tuesday with 25, but then we'll go back up into the 40s. So nothing too much to be worried about. I don't think I'm going to get out of bed Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I will either. <laughs> I know Jamie and I were talking earlier. Pretty much anything above 40 right now, I'm so happy with. It hasn't been yeah. enough snow this year, and I am holding on to that while it lasts. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Anything above 40 is basically shorts weather. Right. <laughs> Thanks, awesome. Chris. Thanks, Chris. Well, it's a great look at weather, and um, I just hope that it lasts. I mean, it's nothing to complain about. Yeah, well, we know we have to bundle up this weekend, but not, not, we won't have to bring out our heated blankets just yet. Yeah, it won't be <laughs> freezing for freezing for a reason, which is a great thing that uh, the social work program has done for years now to raise awareness um, in the social work program. Yeah, it's their, actually their 11th annual Ooh. event. They're wow. uh, raising funds for the homeless. I heard a fact today, and I'm not sure if it's true or not, but there's more homeless in Minot than in Minnesota, which is insane, really? like the entire I've, state of I've Minnesota. Seen people, I've seen people um, like on the streets like begging. I've never seen that before. So it's kind of different, just like what you get in Minot, and then just bringing mm. into winter. And that's the whole reason why they do freezing for a reason is to show what being homeless would be like because you're out there, you don't have an electric blanket. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but um, what else do we have coming up? Um, we have the KMSU auction. Like That's we said, right. we're going to be talking about that a lot, hitting it hard. It's a big, big fundraiser for us, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to yeah, what we have this year. Yeah, you'll see our faces, your beautiful faces doing that. And um, what's our song of the week? We are going to close today with the Spotify song of the week, Everybody by the Backstreet Boys. Taking us back. All right, join us next week on MSU Inside Out. Everybody said